let's just take a moment because the Holy Spirit is in here and I'm caught up. Caught up. I was thinking about how to prepare for this day and I'll, I'll do the normal stuff, my name and some cute things about me. But while he is moving, I have to align to that. Some of y'all came hungry for some inspiration and encouragement. And some of y'all, you filled up already. There's a few ladies in the room that were at a, a retreat we did last weekend and we're in overflow. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing you some of that. So before I launch into this, I'm gonna do what I call my spiritual cleansing of this room. I'm gonna speak some things into some of y'all who need it. Because many of us, part of the problem with the waiting period is we don't know who we are in his eyes. So I'm gonna establish that right now for those of us who are in that mode. And then we'll go into the rest of the rest of the word. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm blind, y'all. I am grateful for this opportunity. I am grateful for Eastgate Church. And I'm grateful to my Abba who put me here. This is the work of God. It's got nothing to do with me. I am a broken and chipped vessel, and he's just using me, and I'm happy to do it. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to just open with a little prayer, and then I'm going to command some things, men included. So, Father, if I have found favor in your sight, you have presented your daughters to me. This is nothing but you, Lord. So, Father, I ask that you will open, open heaven's portal above us. Release now your ministering angels and plant them around this room. Our hearts are open to hear from you, Holy Spirit. So pour now fresh oil on your daughters. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you release the warrior angels to stand guard around us. And every single portal that we have opened that we had no business opening, every single spirit that is in here, spectators, not of his kingdom, I demand that you leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ right now. You are not welcome here. The spirit of fear, the spirit of doubt, even the spirit of religion, I ask that you leave right now under my voice. I walk under the authority of the Holy Spirit and you must move. Mm. This is the environment that we're in. We are in a holy place, amen? Amen. 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 I can't do anything if I don't cleanse my spot. That's the first lesson. Some of us don't understand the authority that we carry. So we're in a waiting season, waiting period, and the Lord is like, hey, you know what you gotta do. You can literally speak things into being. Things will shift for me because I know whose I am. So, who's in here? Am I really loud? Am I too loud? Because I might scream. Mm. All right. I'm wearing sneakers. I know I look a little Pentecostal today. <laughs> you know, I've been in a lot of churches. I was uh, in the Christian, the uh, Catholic church. That's how we grew up. I'm Jamaican, by the way. So I went to the Catholic church. And then uh, my mother was a Methodist minister and teacher in Jamaica. And my husband was a Baptist when I met him, so we did that. <laughs> We're now a Presbyterian church, a perimeter church up the street. So I've been in, in a little bit of that, a little bit of this. I can, you know, be very stoic in my message, but I can deliver you from hell. <laughs> and I can encourage you as well. It's just the way it is. All right? So a couple of things about me. I have a, a wonderful husband. We've been married 23 years this December. He's still alive for the men in the back. <laughs> God bless us. And we have two girls. One's 14 and one's 32. Okay. For those of y'all who are trying to do the math in the room. <laughs> Alright. So we're blessed with two beautiful girls. And I love Jesus. And I, uh, I think this is a really timely message for this particular church. But also all of you who are not members. How many of y'all are not members of the church? You showed up anyway. Alright. All right, y'all about to be members. <laughs> but this is a timely message for the church as you're waiting on the Lord to give you guidance on where you're gonna go and your leadership changes and all those things. 
Like, but in, in particular, it's really about what you want to do and how you're going to show up and how you're going to serve. So I've had my 20 years of wilderness, I call it. Um, what you're seeing, those accolades, took a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. People just hearing about me over the past few years because mainly it was <laughs> social media and the Lord saying, you got to get out there, do what I told you to do. And me saying, okay, I'll do it. But there were 20 years of my life where I call them my wilderness years, when I literally was waiting for God to tell me, what am I supposed to do with this gift you've given me? How do I birth this thing? How many conferences can I go to where I hear women tell me that you got this gift and you do this and you just ask the Lord and I just go home and nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. So for 20 years, I was suffering a lot of losses. Anybody else? Losses. I mean, three babies losses, health losses, abuse losses. Anybody? Financial losses. Anybody? So I was going through these periods like, what is happening? And the Lord was like, oh, I'm just purifying you. What? Why are you doing this? So that one day I'd be at Eastgate Church, October 28th, sharing my story. Somebody else can be blessed by it. Right? So I was doing some research about everything moving so quickly. And as we're talking about weight, I asked the Lord, like, what do I talk to them about? So he gave me this acronym for weight. And we're going to go into that. Um, but the first thing he was showing me about where we are as just a society and how quickly the Google machine gets us what we want. I don't even know if anybody's still going to the library. It might just be me. I go there to hide from my daughters. Okay. <laughs> or social media for immediate gratification. Um, how many of y'all bought the pink stuff off of TikTok and it didn't work, didn't clean nothing? Okay. But you got it anyway because it was on TikTok. All right, or technology, how you absorb the information now, right? We're Netflixing and we're watching whole series in one weekend. All right, same thing. Disney Plus, I'm not even going to movies anymore. We wait for Disney Plus and it shows up and I save some money and we eat food at home. It's convenient. Convenient shopping. I haven't stepped foot in a Publix in three years. I'm Instacart. Everything is Instacart. Top Target, same day delivery. I don't even need to go to Target anymore, right? Everything is a rush. Everything, Christmas starts in July, right? Christmas starts in July. We're literally watching Christmas movies this October. I've already bought Christmas gifts, October. So everything has shifted. We don't want to wait. I was looking up some idioms, idioms. So these are different meanings and definitions and examples of sentences that we use a lot, and this kind of points to how, how much we don't want to wait anymore. Things that we say. I'm on pins and needles. I just can't wait. I'm just counting down the days. I'm eagerly awaiting your response. Somebody did that to me in an email. I'm eagerly awaiting your response. I responded back, I'm like, that's too fast. You gotta slow down and let me think about my response. Don't eagerly await. <laughs> Eagerly awaiting my response. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Soon, everything is rushed. I can't wait to see you again. Not necessarily true in most cases. I can wait to see you again. Okay? I'm just waiting for the right time for God to give me that, ex that exact moment. I need him to give me the exact guidance before I step out on faith. I need to hear from God in a different way. He didn't answer my prayer yet. Answered you two months ago. Sent you some guidance. Wow. Sent you some confirmations. You missed it. You missed it. So waiting on God, we're going to start with W, which he gave me is watchful. Watchful. Hey. <laughs> I'm a kid in Jesus, okay? Watchful. So let's turn to watchful. The first verses we're going to look at, pop that on the screen. This is 2 Peter, so I, I still carry it. Uh, for those of y'all who don't remember what this is, it's the paper version <laughs> of the app. <laughs> so I'm in 2 Peter 3, verse 14, and I'm going to go to uh, 17 and 18 as well. And because I can't see very well, I am going to actually turn to my word. All right. I pray a lot when I speak because I've got angels helping me. And you got to command the people who work for you, right? Yes. Okay. I'm telling you. And just like 
just like that, that's my style. Yep. Just like that, we got a backup. Yeah. Again, you got to command the spirits in the room. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm not sure you can see it. So this is 2 Peter 3, verse 13, verse 14. This should be the ESV, A. Shelley version, easy version. Therefore, beloved, since you're waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, and at peace. And it goes on to say, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you're not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity, amen. We're going to rest in this scripture for a little bit as we talk about being watchful and what that means. Watchful. The first thing that struck me about this verse when I was uh, pulling these together um, was the situation that Peter was in when he wrote it. He was in jail. <laughs> he was awaiting his death. And imagine being in a situation, maybe yours is not, you know, you're not waiting in jail, but you're in a circumstance or a situation right now that feels kind of like that. Like, I can't get out. I feel like I'm trapped in this thing. This job, this relationship, this finance, whatever it is, you feel like you're trapped in it. And this is coming after Peter, James, and John had that moment, that experience, the transfiguration. Y'all remember that in the word? And I imagine you've had such an incredible encounter with Jesus. Physically, right? He was there, he saw it. And now you're sitting in this place, this dark place. And, and yet here Peter is giving us instructions on how, how. To wait, how to be watchful, how to be watchful, waiting for God. I pulled out a couple things because the first thing struck me. He says, to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. In the situation that you're in right now, are you at peace where you are? Because God's not going to come to you. You throw like a tornado and chaos and you're praying and he's like, I'm throwing you a life raft and you're missing it because you're still the tornado. You've got to be at peace. If you're under 21, the word is you gotta chill. If you're from the 80s, that is, right? I'm an 80s baby, right? You gotta be at peace about where you are. And that's very hard because we have that spirit of control, women, where we wanna fix things right away. We wanna fix it for our kids, we wanna fix it for our family, everybody around, we wanna fix it. And yet, here he is saying that you gotta be found without spot or blemish and at peace, at peace. The other part was take care that you're not carried away with the error of lawless people, lawless people, and lose your own stability. This is gonna be painful for some of you, but some of your friends got to go. Some of your friends fall in the category of lawless people. Some people need to be loved from afar. If you're trying to get out of a situation, you, you're gonna to have to make some shifts and changes. You've got to literally make your environment holy so that you can hear from him clearly. And that means some people got to go. Now, I'm not telling you to go unfriend people on Facebook <laughs> and tell your in-laws you never liked them anyway. Don't do that. <laughs> I never liked the way you cooked, and therefore it's over. Don't do that. But in your heart, some of you are carrying some of the baggage and burdens of other people who don't belong to you. You're trying to resurrect your family, and that's God's job. Pray for them and let them work. Don't be the little G. Okay? Let it go. Why? You lose your own stability. You have to have a firm foundation when it comes to the watchful period. And here's why. In order for you to grow in grace, you got to know what you're looking for. Being watchful means that you're acutely aware when God moves. And this gets me all the time, y'all, women to women, how the Lord will send you help, but it doesn't look like what you think it should look like, and so you dismiss it. It looks like someone who doesn't look like you. It looks like someone who doesn't talk like you, someone who doesn't live where you live, and you'll dismiss the help. Sometimes it'll come from a man, but I don't want to hear that. Men don't know what they're talking about. Right? And so we'll miss the moment. 
will miss the encounters. My life is <laughs> filled with spiritual encounters. We're still trying to come off of, like I said, last weekend, we had a recording of angels and we're still trying to figure out like, what happened, Are we, what happened here? So it's not that these things aren't happening, but you have to be watchful. And your heart has to be in a posture to receive it when he sends it. Watchful, watchful. So you gotta watch for the instructions, you gotta watch for the answers, and you gotta watch for the confirmation. And the confirmation is gonna come to you through the word. And sometimes he'll send someone and they'll say something and you're like, I've always thought that. And you go back in the word and the Lord confirms it and it's confirm again. But you've got to do something with the information. Psalm 23, thy rod and staff. What are they doing? They're guiding you. But are you missing him? When the rod and staff are guiding you, rod on one side, staff on the other, sometimes it hurts when, it, <laughs> when the Lord is correcting you. But are you missing it? Are you watchful for the moments when the Lord is guiding you, rod and staff? Are you missing those moments? For young people who might watch this messaging, I believe we're being recorded. For those of y'all on the YouTube streets, because he showed me some people, some young people. Under 21 is considered young to me, I'm over 50, all right? And you're seeking God in this waiting period. And this is gonna be a time where you're gonna be asking questions <laughs> like Jesus in the temple. It's okay to ask the questions, but don't be disappointed if you're asking an adult who doesn't know the answer. Everybody doesn't have the answer. Still ask the question, seek out God, go in his word, and he will reveal it to you. If you watch for the answers, they will show up. If you're willing to receive it, and listen, there are going to be times when the answer comes is not exactly what you want to hear. The Lord, like a few months ago, um, <laughs> and I'm looking at this table because I've got two spiritual bit warriors right here. Thank you, Jesus, for help. And I was like, Lord, I'm seeing all these hearts, these broken hearts, and I can see, I can see what's on your heart. Not for me to tell you. But I'd say, Lord, why are you showing me this? And he'd come back and go, well, because I want you to see what's in your heart. I thought you wanted me to tell her something. I, want, I thought you wanted me to tell her how she needs to get her household together. How she needs to pray more and just believe you more. He said, no, I want to show you what you need to do and how you respond to her. Very different, you know why? Because we're falling into judgment. It's so easy for us to be watchful of other people's household and missing what's going on in ours. Okay? So I can stand as a, as a proud mom of two very talkative girls. Oh. But I'm watching God move in their lives in ways that I didn't even think was possible. I was gonna try to fix some things. And I had to watch him work. I had to take my hand of control off of that off of these girls and let God be God. Amen. And I had to watch as my daughters broke. My younger daughter thought about committing suicide. That's where Pi started. Proud, Inspired, Empowered was a brand that, the God, that God gave me to save my daughter. It wasn't about anybody else. It was to save her, give her the words, and then give her the instructions. And then she took it, and then he took the rest because I was obedient. Amen? Amen. Mm. So watching with your, your spiritual eyes and your ears, that's important. You see, today you're gonna get some oil. I told you, Benjamin, you're not coming here for adrenaline today. I don't want you to be pumped up and leave and get in the parking lot and start crying. I don't want you a week from now to wonder what happened. I went to this conference and now I'm on my knees crying again. I don't want that for you. He didn't send me here for that. He sent me here for oil. So there are going to be some things I'm going to tell you that's going to break some spirits in here. We're going to leave it in here. We're going to have deliverance in here. That's where we're going today. For the rest of this day, your heart belongs to him. Every situation that you have, we're going to bring it in here. This is the temple. This is where we come to Abba, our Father. And we're going to make some changes today so that we don't repeat the behavior. Amen? Because we are daughters of the King. Anticipation. Mm. A, anticipation. 
So the scripture for this is uh, Luke 1, 39 through 45. Y'all can pop that up for me. Now, mom is in the room. I'm going to warn y'all about this one. Y'all are going to be mad. But I'm speaking from love, and I speak only what he tells me to speak. Okay? All right. All right, so Luke 1. Now at this time, Mary arose and hurried to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and she entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. I think most of us know this story, right? Okay. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, her baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and empowered by him. See, that word empowered, I told you all that word empowered came from Jesus. And she exclaimed loudly, blessed, worthy to be praised. Are you among women? And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has, continue, how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb womb leaped for joy and blessed, spiritually fortunate and favored. We can stop here. I'm going to show you what you're missing. Anticipation. How many in here are moms? Okay. You remember that moment when you found out you were having this baby and you started planning and buying stuff for the baby came? You remember how you started daydreaming and the names and how you're gonna, you know, I'm gonna do my daughter's hair, where I'm gonna take my son. Remember that time? Do you remember the anticipation that was welling up in your belly before the baby came, maybe the first couple kicks? 